Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX may reuse a booster this year, UK authorities report on airshow safety, a new Wright B flyer is under construction. I'm Brie Cross, it's March 15th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX could launch a spacecraft using a previously flown booster later this year, if all goes according to plan. Speaking in the closing session of the Satellite 2016 conference held this week just outside Washington, D.C., SpaceX COO Gwynne Shotwell said that the company might launch a recovered rocket, first stage, sometime this year. Satellite Today reports that Shotwell said that reusing recovered boosters can significantly decrease the cost of getting spacecraft into orbit. She said the company's target is a 30% reduction in production of new boosters through reuse. Shotwell said that while the company would like to recover every booster, they know that it's not a practical goal. But she said a 75-80% to 80% recovery rate is feasible. The UK Air Accident Investigation Branch has published a special report that offers 14 specific recommendations for improving safety at air shows in the UK. The report stems from the investigation into an accident involving a Hawker Hunter military jet that was flying at last year's Shoreham Air Show. The plane conducted a maneuver with both a vertical and rolling component. Following the subsequent descent, the aircraft did not achieve level flight before it impacted a highway leading to 11 fatalities on the ground. The recommendations are detailed but in general deal with risk and safety management, thorough planning and coordination with air display management of the maneuvers to be performed, and assuring that the location and altitudes involved in the maneuvers remain clear of people. The report also addressed pilot proficiency. The AAIB said in issuing the report that it recognizes that as well as being enjoyed by large numbers of spectators and participants, flying displays are also considered to provide important economic and educational benefits. After the break, EAA Chapters help with Wright B Flyer Project. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Wright B Flyer Inc. builds and operates a modern representation of the 1911 Wright Model B Flyer airplane. It's used to demonstrate what it looks like to fly the first production model of a Wright Brothers airplane, and it's always a big hit whenever it shows up at an air event. However, their current airplane is getting a bit long in the tooth, so it's been planned for some time to build a new one. Now that plan is coming to fruition, thanks to help from EAA Chapters. EAA Chapter 5, based in Middlefield, Ohio, has volunteered to build the primary structure for all four wing panels, and construction at the Wright B Flyer hangar has started by organizing volunteers and EAA Chapter 382 members. The entire project is being funded by donations, and Lycoming has donated a new IO390 engine. Local businesses have also donated materials and services to the project. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. If you're electrified by the concept of electric flight, then the 2016 Electric Aircraft Symposium is the place to be. The 10th Electric Aircraft Symposium is to be held May 19th through the 20th at the San Francisco Airport Marriott Waterfront and will focus on early entry, practical market opportunities in all electric, hybrid, and autonomous flights. The Electric Aircraft Symposium is now the go-to conference for electric flight. March 21st through the 24th, Marks the Mod Aero Next Gen Aviation Festival being held at the Lone Star Executive Airport in Conroe, Texas. The Mod Aero Next Gen Aviation Festival was created by a group of aviation industry veterans with the goal of stimulating positive growth in the pilot population and aviation community. More than 500 aircraft are expected to fly in. There will be seminars, vendors, entertainment, and drone racing. Numerous aircraft will be on display. 
The Los Angeles International Air Meet of 1910 was the first major air show in the world, and they are still doing it right. March 19th and 20th are the dates for the Los Angeles County Air Show being held at Fox Airfield near Lancaster, California. It will be featuring United States Air Force Thunderbirds and numerous other military and civilian air show acts. It also features the 2016 STEM Expo being sponsored by Northrop Grumman. This air event has something for everyone. Also on March 19th and 20th is the Tampa Bay Airfest 2016. In 2014, Airfest was awarded Best Military Sign by the USAF Thunderbirds due to the incredible partnership between McDill and Tampa Bay, and they're looking to top that performance this year. There will be stacked displays of military aircraft, aerial demonstrations by the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, and other military and civilian performers. After these messages, Eurofighter Typhoons to fly at Red Flag. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> exercise Red Flag at the Nealis Air Force Base in Nevada is a realistic combat training exercise involving the air, space, and cyber forces of the United States and its allies. For the first time, eight Italian Eurofighter Typhoons will participate in the exercise. The U.S. military has reportedly been flying top cover missions with the OV-10 Bronco aircraft as part of Operation Inherent Resolve. The use of these Vietnam-era aircraft is described as an experiment with aircraft that are less expensive to operate. The U.S. Department of Defense has awarded a multiple-unit contract to Drone Aviation for its Winch Aerostat Small Platform Tactical Aerostat System. This is a highly technical and mobile aerostat system that provides day-night video and wireless communication range extension. A six-part television show is set to debut Sunday night on the Smithsonian Channel that will delve into NTSB reports of aviation accidents in Alaska. This has drawn criticism from the state of Alaska and families of the people injured or killed in the aircraft accidents. A former flight attendant for WestJet has filed charges against a pilot alleging sexual assault in a Maui hotel five years ago. It's alleged that WestJet is intentionally scheduling the pilot to avoid flights into Hawaii, where a court summons awaits the pilot. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. When the heavy metal band Iron Maiden flies all over the world to perform concerts, they do it in a Boeing 747 dubbed Ed Force One. The aircraft carries not only the band, but also the entire staging system. However, a freak accident at the airport in Santiago, Chile, led to severe damage to the airplane. According to the band's website, Ed Force One was attached to a tow vehicle to be moved to a fueling facility. Upon moving, the towing bar disconnected, allowing the tow tug to collide with the aircraft, badly damaging the undercarriage, two of the aircraft's engines, and injuring two ground tug operators. It's reported that the airplane is being inspected to determine the extent of the damage and the amount of repairs needed, but it's reported that it could involve replacing two of the engines. The website says that other arrangements are being made to transport the band and 20 tons of equipment so that their worldwide concert tour can be continued. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network. 
the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.